the spell of your charms I felt your arms hold me tight Twas heaven to find such bliss in each kiss I lost my heart but I found one so true in old Lisbon with you Breakfast? Well, the star of Tripoli sank on schedule, sir. Good. How deep? 2,000 fathoms. And that's very good indeed. We put in the claim? Yes, sir. I notified the insurance company this morning by cable. Oh. The American lady arrives at half past four this afternoon on flight 11, sir. Mm. Is she to be met? Certainly not. You are becoming increasingly stupid, Selwyn. This has got to stop. I'm very sorry, sir. That's all. Very good, sir. Oh, um... What about that last shipment of perfume? It's been disposed of? Uh, yes, sir, but... Uh, but what? The price has dropped considerably. Why? Uh, the market is glutted. Apparently, someone else is bringing perfume in, sir. Who? Nobody knows. Probably some foreigner, sir. Mm, whoever it is must be eliminated. We've eliminated competition before. We shall do so again. Oh, um... Call Inspector Fonseca. Ask him, will he be kind enough to have lunch with me today? Very good, sir. Here. Yes, sir. An excellent cigar, Signor Marvellous, and a superb lunch. If you'll pardon a touch of pride, Inspector, my chef is a jewel, a purest ray serene. He should be, after 16 years in Paris. You amaze me, Inspector. You actually have a dossier on my chef? I have a dossier on every alien resident in Lisboa, Senor Marvellous. That is my job. I understood that you were with the Internal Revenue Department. 
I am responsible for certain aspects of internal revenue, such as smugglers, especially alien smugglers. Smugglers? Really? The field is quite crowded, Signor Marvellous. Uh, my interest is purely academic, Inspector. Good. These smugglers are a desecration to decency. They cheat the state out of millions of escudos annually. Millions. But surely your police boats are faster than theirs. Our boats are faster, except the orca, of course. But they are so many, we are so few. Orca? The boat of the American. You have an American smuggler? We are certain he is a smuggler, but as yet we have been unable to obtain any evidence. But someday he will make a slip. They all do. Someday he will. And that will be the end of a very interesting association. Clever rogue. I shall miss him. What is his name? Evans. Robert John Evans. Well, I must be getting back to the office. Thank you again for the lunch. The pleasure is mine, Inspector. You must come often. Thank you. Seraphim? Yes, senor. I want you to find a Captain Robert John Evans. He has a boat called the Orca. I want to see him as soon as possible. I will tell him. When you do, tell him it's a matter involving $10,000. Yes, senor. Expected? Yes. Well, we might as well go on in. Everything set? See. Si. Inspector Fonseca, I'm on it. Good day, Captain Evan. Did you have a pleasant voyage? Oh, very pleasant, thank you. I regret the necessity, but may we come aboard? By all means, make yourself at home. I uh, fear I must search your boat. As usual. And I won't find anything. As usual. Anda, mangia obra. Para que? Não vale a pena. Vai a busca mesma. You know, Inspector, I sometimes wonder if you know what you're looking for. It could be so many things. Diamonds, watches, cameras, tobacco, perfume, to mention only a few of the less innocuous items of contraband. But what makes you people so sure that I deal in contraband? We are not without resources.
This orca has been reported to us from practically all the free ports in the Mediterranean, yeah. where such luxuries may be acquired at a low price. Perplexing, isn't it? Why else would you burn all that petrol? I'm a fisherman. A fisherman who never catches a fish. Well, I'm unlucky. No, no, no. It is I who am unlucky, Captain, <laughs> so far. Yes. Yes, my heart bleeds for you, Inspector. It really does. Encontraste alguma coisa? Nada. Well, goodbye, Inspector. Au revoir, Captain. Not goodbye. Oh, yes. Yes, I was forgetting. <laughs> Sa bande este alte ca do barco do americano, o orca? Orca? Pedroso. Obrigado. You like that one, huh? Yes. It is the prettiest one. Well, it's yours. To keep forever? To have and to hold till death do you part. Muito obrigado, meu capitão. De nada. You ever been married, Tubby? Not me. I know too much about women. You do, huh? Sure. A woman is uh, like a fisherman. Only they bait hook with smile. <laughs> they make a wig like a worm. Zing. The man is in the frying pan. Now, they won't catch me. You sure of that, huh? But it is very pleasing to steal the bait. Yes, there's nothing like a piece of bait. Captain Evans? Yeah. My patron, Senor Aristide Mavros, wishes to speak with you. And who are you? My name is Seraphim. Sarah who? One word, Captain. Seraphim. But he can tell Mr. Mavros that I'm usually aboard. He can find me here. He wishes to speak with you at his villa in Lisboa now. Well, I'm sorry. I have another engagement. I was told to suggest 10,000. Escudos? Dollars. Say, that's quite a suggestion. You got a car? At your disposal. After you. Captain Evans? Yes. This way, please. Can I get you a drink, sir? Uh, yes, uh, whiskey and soda, please. With ice. Mr. Mavros will join in a few moments. can love and then be wise. Not that remorse did not oppose temptation. A little still she strove and much repented, and whispering, I will ne'er consent, consented. Say that last line again, my dear. And whispering, I will ne'er consent, consented. Delightful. Now I'll leave you with the birds and the bees. I have a gentleman waiting.
Like to sell that hat? Go away. No, I'd really like to buy the hat. The hat is not for sale. Are you sure? Quite sure. I was afraid of that. Captain Evans? Yeah. Aristide Marvelous. How are you? Should we go in the house? All right. Shut up. I understand that you have a fast boat, Captain. That's right, a converted MTB. I also understand that you're a smuggler. True? That would be an inadmissible truth, if true. I'm not a policeman, Captain Evans. Won't you sit down? Thank you. What's on your mind? I have need of a fast boat and a man who is not lacking in discretion. The compensation will be substantial. Your man mentioned $10,000. That is correct. I don't kill people. Not required. And I don't traffic in narcotics. Not required. Well, exactly what is required? First, you will go to a cantina in Alfama tonight. And you will meet an American lady who will give you a small package which you will bring to me unopened. Well, where do I meet this lady and when? Ten o'clock, the guy of Riel. The lady will be wearing a brooch in the form of a fleur de lis. And the recognition word is Saint Souci. Why all the cloak and dagger business? This matter is consummated too prosaically, Captain. The lady may feel she's being overcharged. Oh, I see. You rang, sir. Before Captain Evans leaves, give him a thousand dollars, American currency. Very well, sir. A thousand? The rest will be paid when you have fulfilled your contract. Satisfactory? No, I don't know. I'm not in the habit of going into any contract blind. You will be free to withdraw at any time at your discretion. All right, I'll buy your first card. And then we'll agree. Any further questions? Yes. Um, who's the girl with the hat? Your concern is with the American lady, Captain. All right. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Inspector Fonseca of the Lisbon Police Department. Yes. It is my privilege to welcome you to Lisbon and to offer you my assistance in every way possible. You're very kind. I wonder why. Portugal is very hospitable, and we wish to make certain that our distinguished guests enjoy a pleasant sojourn without even the possibility of any unpleasant incident, if I make myself clear. Very clear. Thank you. Anything for the Mr. Bank. I imagine that we will meet from time to time while you are in Lisbon. Oh, you are stopping at the Istoril Palacio? Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Oh, no. I am sure that a person of your intelligence will not do anything to, to hinder a hard-working official. You can depend on that, Inspector. Yes. 
This is Mrs. Meadow. How do you do, Mrs. How Meadow? Do you? May I have your parcel, please? Of course. Thank you. I will send you a passport up in a few minutes. Thank you. took the liberty of bringing up your passport, Mrs. Merrill. Thank you. Well? This is too valuable a document to entrust to strangers, even in a hotel like this. I wonder if you realize the significance of this little green book. Fully realize. I fully realize that you're being obnoxious. Now, will you please give me my passport and leave? Sylvia Merrill, tourist. Purpose of travel, pleasure. Not pleasure, Mr. Norworth. You've seen to that. It is illegal to make false declarations on a passport. If you do, I can pick it up. You can't pick it up merely because you're suspicious. That is correct, Mrs. Merrill. But we have more to go on than mere suspicion. Is it a crime or a felony to tell the State Department that if they couldn't do anything about it, I would take matters into my own hands? We explained to you the potentials of this situation, and you agreed to let us handle it through the proper channels, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, I did. You pawned $100,000 worth of jewels in New York City on April the 9th. On the 11th, you booked passage to Zurich on TWA. On the 14th, you went to Bergson and Sons on Kumsgarten, where you disposed of $150,000 worth of jewels. Then you booked passage for Lisbon. Thank you very much for the financial report. But since when has the State Department become interested in my jewels, my money? Since you started throwing monkey wrenches into our machinery. But nevertheless, it is my money and they are my jewels. And I'm entitled to dispose of them in any way that I see fit. That's true, Mrs. Merrill, until we find that you're spending it in a way that might be hurting us. I'm not in the least bit concerned with whether I hurt the State Department or not. And it's become obvious that the State Department feels the same way about me. I have certain rights as a human being, if not as an American citizen. Now, I would appreciate it if you'd get out of here. I have a headache. Would it help your headache any if I told you that your husband will be released within 30 days? I don't believe you. It's official, Mrs. Merrill. You can take my word for it. And you can take my word for it that I don't believe a word you say. I'm sorry. Some people are under the impression that employees of the department spend all their time at luncheons, sipping tea, exchanging pleasantries. We try not to change that impression. That is, unless it becomes necessary. You are still subject to the laws of the United States. If you violate them, we'll take steps to correct it. Is that clear? Sickeningly clear. Now, will you please leave? I really do have a headache. Please don't give us one. Good night, Mrs. Merrill. This is Mrs. Merrill speaking in 311. I won't accept any calls until 9 o'clock in the morning. I want to rest. Thank you. No, ma'am. Elevator for guests is over there. Will you take me down to the basement, please? For your discretion. I've seen nothing. Alfama. something to drink? No, thank you. Oh, yes, a glass of water, please. Water? Yes. May 
I join you? You may not. I believe the word is sans souci. Won't you sit down? Thank you. That is a fleur de lis, isn't it? Yes. They're very nice. You're not going to drink that stuff. Well, what does one drink around here? Well, at least try a glass of Madeira or something. Very well. Madeira, please. Uh, whiskey and soda with ice. Madeira, whiskey and soda with ice. That's right. Too I understand you're an American. Yes. So am I. Do you work for Mr. Mavris? Yes. What's his first name? Aristide. What's yours? Merrill. Mrs. Oh. Well, mine's Evans, Mr. I understand you have an envelope for me. I didn't bring it with me. Oh? Well, just how do I get it? You come to my room with me. Uh. Not now, later. I don't want to return for an hour or so. Have you had dinner? She is. How long have you been associated with Mr. Mavris? About six hours and ten minutes. Oh? What's the matter? Not long enough? No, no, it's not that. It's just that, well, I hope that Mr. Mavris knows what he's doing. So do I. Did he tell you anything? Only that I was to meet you here and get a package. Is that all? Something vague about using the orca later. Orca? That's my boat. When you see her, you'll understand. I'll see her. Oh? When? Soon, I hope. Jantar? Dinner? No, no, bring us another round of drinks when we decide. Si, senor. They've just finished their dinner. Stay with him. It's very important. Sweet home for Brazilians. It's lovely. I charter it. Operators seem to have the idea you chartered me. Oh, I only use it on special occasions. Mm -hmm. This is a special occasion? Very. Here, yeah, let me. Thank you. Oh, it's a lovely night. 
certainly not a night for making decisions. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've, I've never felt so completely alone in all my life. Can I trust you? No. No. Well, isn't that what you expected? I brought you up here to give you an envelope. Huh. Well, give it to me and I'll get out. No, I don't think I will. That envelope contains a great deal of money. All right. I'll tell Mavis to send another messenger boy, one he can trust. Just a moment. I'll get the money. Aren't you at all curious to know what this is about? Not especially. But if you want to tell me, go ahead, tell me. Did you ever hear of Lloyd Merrill? You mean Merrill, the industrialist, the oil man, the one the Reds grabbed? My husband. Oh. Oh, I see. But why Mavis? Why not Washington? I went to the State Department. And after two solid years, nothing. I only know that my husband is still alive. Finally, I heard of this Aristide Mavis, and I was told that he could get my husband out, but for a price. And this is part of the price, and it's a very large one. I've never met Mr. Mavis. Well, I have, and I know nothing about him. What was your impression? A crook. I know that, but is he a reliable crook? <laughs> that I don't know. I wish I could see him. Well, it should be easy. He doesn't think it's advisable. Look, if I went to him and told him he wanted to bring the money in person, he'd probably think it advisable. You don't think that he would call the whole thing off? I don't know. How much is involved? $250,000. He won't call it off. I think I'll take your advice, Captain. Will you telephone me here and let me know? Sure. Why the look? I was just thinking. Your husband's a pretty lucky man. Thank you. Good night. This is Mrs. Merrill speaking. I'm expecting a phone call. When it comes, will you put it right through, please? Mr. Merrill won't be in for some time, sir. Yes, I know. I'll wait. Can I get you something to drink, sir? Yes, whiskey and soda with ice. Yes. That American one. Yes, Miss Nosey Parker. He's without manners. Probably. And civilized. Undoubtedly. And he insulted me. Twice. That must have been difficult. I shall report this to the master. Do so. He always enjoyed to know that I have kicked you. And I'll take that. No. Yes. No. Yes. It's you without the hat. Huh. Here's your whiskey and soda. Thank you. Where's your glass? I never drink whiskey, only wine. Well, you don't expect me to drink alone, do you? If you insist. You don't drink whiskey, huh? Hardly ever. You been eating garlic? In the sausage, there is a soup song garlic. In the garlic, there is a soup song sausage. What's your name? Robert John Evans. What I call you, Robert John? Well, my friends call me Jack. I will call you Robert John. I think I'm not your friend. What's your name? Maria Maddalena Massani. What was that? 
Maria Maddalena Massani. I'll call you Maggie. Oh, why Maggie? Short for Maria Maddalena Mazzani. Yes. What do you do around here, besides not drink whiskey? I am a secretary for Monsieur Marvels. I got the idea that Selwyn was the secretary. That one. He is only secretary that write the letters. Monsieur Marvels have many secretaries. Alicia, Diana, Regina and me. Monsieur Mavros loved beautiful things. Well, tell me, uh, just what kind of work do you do for Mavros? Oh, play tennis, play ginrami, play piano. Sounds like nice work. Oh, it is. What work you are doing for Monsieur Mavros? I don't quite know. Maybe you will smuggle for him. Who told you I was a smuggler? Seraphim. Seraphim talks too much. Well, what does he do around here? I don't know what he does. You think I'm beautiful? Mm-hmm. Very. Then, why don't you kiss me one time? What? You better take it easy, Catnip. I've got a very low boiling point. Ah, oh, good evening, Captain. I'm afraid I'm rather late. I hope you haven't been bored. No, no. I was gaming at the casino. I have a syndicate there, Greek, of course. I like to play. It's a peccadillo of mine. One pocket into the other, actually. But you wouldn't think that red would turn up nine times in succession. <laughs> but it did. I was playing black, naturally. Marvelous is the Greek word for black, as you no doubt know. I don't speak Greek. No, I do, of course. Are you a Greek citizen? Uh, not at the moment. I suppose one might term me a citizen of the world, Captain. I was born on the island of Mytilene, once called Lesbos. Delightful legend, that. Yeah. Look, just where does my boat fit into this Merrill business? Oh, uh, Mrs. Merrill has confided in you. No, only that you are going to arrange your husband's escape. I understand that she's young and beautiful. She is. Strange that she should want the old gentleman back when all those lovely millions could be hers alone. Odd, isn't it? I assume you're not ready to tell me what part my boat plays in this business? Your assumption is correct, Captain. But it is because my arrangements are as yet incomplete. By the way, did she give you the package? No. The lady changed her mind. She wants to see you. Mrs. Merrill, please. Uh, Mrs. Merrill? Yes. Uh, could you dine with me tomorrow night? Thank you. I'll send my car for you at eight. Good night. Not that I don't trust you, Captain. But I do. Well, not as completely as I would like. I will also expect you for dinner tomorrow night, Captain. Okay. Can my man drive you? No, I'll take a taxi. Selwyn. Sir? Call Ahmed Kamal in Athens and tell him to proceed. Yes. And uh, Selwyn. Yes, sir. Which one was it? Maria Madalena, sir. Burned two of her newest garments. Yes, sir. And uh, she uh, kicked me again, sir. Hard. Very hard, sir. Then just burn one gun. Yes, sir.
it is. Head to the nose, Jack. But well, come on, hurry up before those blue nosed clowns get here. <laughs> Sorry, but we have our others. Yes, I know. I give it away. All right, okay, Afonso. Jack. Okay, okay, throw okay. it in. Thank you very much. Okay, come on, open up. Fat. It better be. There's over six thousand dollars worth of good French perfume tied to the bottom of that boat. <laughs> a force would never try to cheat us. I hope not. I should like to drink a toast to the person who created your gown, Mrs. Merrill. It's a perfect frame for a lovely picture. Thank you. I suppose I inherited my love of beauty from my father. He was a connoisseur of fine jewels and only stole the best. He preferred pearls and old jade above all else. A man of very delicate sensibilities. You mean to say that your father was actually a thief? We have been thieves for six generations, Mrs. Merrill. Very successful thieves. Surely he's joking. I don't think so. Monsieur Mavros never jokes. Perhaps it's my candor, Mrs. Merrill, that confuses you. I, I am confused. You say that you're a thief. And you ask me to turn over a very large sum of money to you. What assurance do I have? None, my dear lady. None whatever. Except that I pride myself on being a very reliable thief. What Mrs. Merrill means is, how can she be sure you can fulfill your contract? Then why not pay me half down and half when I deliver your husband? In that way, you'll only have to half trust me. I suppose I have no other choice. Oh, there's something else, Mr. Mavris. The man from the State Department is being very curious about me. Then why not remove the object of his curiosity for a few days? How? Charter Captain Evans' boat for a short cruise. That should give him something to really puzzle over. This can be arranged? Very simply. And I have a man who will make a very good chaperone. Then shall we go into the office and discuss the details? Let's finish our coffee in the other room. Young. Yes, she is. But not as young as you might think. Look, all she wants is to get her husband back. How long have you been working for Mavris? Nearly a year. Did he ever let you out of here? Sometimes. Well, uh, could we go somewhere tomorrow night for dinner and talk, maybe? Have a cab meet me at the corner of Avenida Passata and Quinta at 8 o'clock. It's a deal. That I cannot tell you, my dear lady. While I realize that curiosity is a woman's prerogative, I cannot reveal my methods. Now, let us just assume that money is a golden key that will open any lock. All that you're really interested in is getting your husband back, safe and sound. That's right. Which poses a question in my mind. Yes? How much is your husband worth, Mrs. Merrill? I thought we'd agreed on the fee. You misunderstand me. I'm referring to his assets. Total. I fail to see that that is any of your business, Mr. Mavris. 
A direct answer to a direct question. I understand that he's worth 25 millions at least. And in what way does that concern you? He's also quite advanced in years, while you are quite young and lovely. I find it strange. I certainly find you strange, Mr. Mavris. I wish you'd come to the point, if there is a point. There is. Uh, consider the circumstance of death. Now, we all start dying at the moment of birth, and we live until we die. Death is a fact, unpleasant perhaps, but under certain circumstances, not unpleasant. Just what is it you're trying to say? That you, my dear lady, would make a very beautiful and a very rich widow. Has something happened to my husband? Oh, no, he's in fairly good health. But it occurred to me that the trip might prove to be too much for him. What are you saying? That you would be a widow with only $24 million. I would have the other million. Of all the... Why, you horrible creature. This is incredible. You stand there and, and plot to murder a human being, my husband, as calmly as if you were discussing the weather. You monster. Uh, gently, gently, please. Open the door. Oh, dear. I am an awkward philosopher. I merely set forth a hypothetical situation. I did not for a moment suggest that we dispose of your husband. But you said I that... was trying to say that this is a classic situation in which a woman without honor would commit murder. I was, in my uh, clumsy fashion, Attempting to pay you a compliment. Instead, I've shocked you. And I've hurt you. Please forgive me. Please. All right. Friends? Yes. Will you take me back to my hotel, please? Certainly. Good night, Miss Metheny. Good night. Good night. Good evening, Mrs. Merrill. How do you do? I don't believe we've met. I'm Philip Norwood. How do you do? Are you enjoying Lisbon, Mrs. Merrill? Very much, Mr. Norwood. No complications? None. I wish there was some way I could do this without using Mavris. Why? I don't trust him. But I do trust you. Look, a thing like this requires a lot more than just a boat and a strong back. It requires contacts, organization. So don't worry. If Mavris tries to run wide, I'll see that he goes back and touches first base. At least I have one person that I can depend on. <laughs> you know, you asked me once before if you could trust me, remember? And I can trust you now, can't I? As long as you keep your distance. Oh, I think your bark is worse than your bite. Don't take a chance on it. Why? Well, call it instinct or magnetism or just plain animal attraction. But you're the sort of woman who... Oh, skip it. I'm the sort of woman who what? Married for one thing, in love with a husband for another. I was really just teasing you, Captain. Yes, I know. Good night, Mrs. Merrill. Good night, Captain Evans. And thank you very much for everything. Yeah. For burning? Yes. A moment. Whose? Maria Madalena's. She loves this dress? You may be sure of that. Burn one she does not love, an old one. Those are the master's orders. It would please me if you burned an old one. Would it please you to know why this dress is being burned? Why she is being punished? No. You will burn an old one.
I've never seen you look so lovely. Once, when I was very young, I had a nightingale, a blind one, that sang like showers of little silver bells. A hawk killed it. I killed that hawk. Please tell of him. And then I had a kitten that slept on my pillow at night. A dog killed it. I killed that dog. Stop it. I'm sorry. Can I get you some brandy? No, thank you. Nothing. I saved your gown this morning, Maria. Selwyn was going to burn it. Thank you. He wanted to tell me why you were being punished. I did not permit this. I know why. And you are meeting him tonight. I'm not a child. I have that right. You will never marry him, Maria. You are sure? Very sure. Some potatoes, please, and very cold. And I think we'll have the dinner. How do you like your turnips? Rare. Both rare. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now? Now what? You wanted to ask me questions. Ask. But look, I didn't bring you here just to ask you questions. Ha! Huh. Let us do the questions first. Then I can enjoy my turnip. All right, who is Marcus? I think that even Mavros does not know the answer to that one. Well, what is Mavros? This also I do not know. I only know that he uses everybody. Everyone. But for his own ends. He's without pity. But he pays me 4,000 escudos a month. So? How'd you get mixed up with him? One must live. I have been destitute. Now I am not destitute. So much for Monsieur Marvis. In other words, you're not talking. Oh, please believe me, Jacques. I have worked for him almost a year. I know nothing about him. He does not confide. Do you want to know the personal thing between him and me? No. I want to tell you. No, Junior. No. No? OK. Then we talk about you. It's a pretty dull subject. So? Why you do not like yourself? You so bad? Maybe familiarity breeds contempt. Maybe you are unfair to you. And me. You? You do not make me happy. Well, I'm sorry. How can I make you happy? Play a game. Okay, what? Play that there's never been a yesterday. There'll never be a tomorrow. Okay. You're swell. I'm fat? <laughs> no. No, I mean, well, let's just say that you have a very fat soul. Tell you something, you will not laugh. Sure? Sure. I feel tonight like I'm 13 years old. 13. I remember my confirmation gown. It was the loveliest in Fleur sur Mer, Jacques. White voile with little lilies embroidered on it. And now. Again, I, I'm 13.
Ajudem o pobre do ceguinho que não tem que viver. Ajudem o pobre do ceguinho. Quem ajuda o pobre do ceguinho? What are you doing? It will not take a moment. I want to burn a candle for St. Jude the Obscure. St. Jude? The patron saint of impossible things. What impossible thing are you after? Nothing's impossible for St. Jude. A policia. Yes, I recognize you, Senor Fonseca. What is your interest in the American Captain Evans? No interest. But you followed him here. I'm merely acting, shall we say, as an unseen chaperone. An affair of the heart? Yes, sir. But if you are keeping them under observation, I'm sure I have nothing to worry about. Boa noite, Senor Inspector. Boa noite. Shipment. Like a hose. Look, if one second smells, you'll smell like a skunk. Now go on, have ah. a good time, but be careful. Good luck, Jack. Who is that? Uh, my dentist. What? My dentist. Okay. <laughs> I wish this night would never end. I'm afraid it has, Maggie. <sighs> this has been a night I will long remember, Jacques. But now, like the Cinderella, I must go back. Back to what, Maggie? Oh, that Mavros. He will tell Selwyn to burn some of my dresses. What? That is how he disciplines us. He buys the dresses, then if we displease him, he burn them. But what does it matter now? Look, I'll make a deal with you. For every one he burns, I'll buy you two. How's that, okay? No. There are only two dresses in her life that are really important to a woman. Both white. Oh? Her confirmation gown and her... and her bridal gown. Oh, oh, so that's the way the wind blows. When does this event take place? We haven't named the day. The man and I. Well, when you do, Maggie, you let me know and I'll buy you the most beautiful wedding gown in Lisboa. Is that a promise? I promise you will be the first to know. All right. Let's go. Maria Madalena. Well named. Let me go. You'll never spend a night with him again, Maria. How will you stop me? I'll stop him. I would have last night, but a small incident prevented me. There will be no more small incidents. 
Why the gun? I said, why the gun? He doesn't like Captain Evans. Very interesting. You are aware, of course, that Evans is working for me. He kept her out all night. Oh? Nevertheless, I make the decisions here, always. Remember that. Yes, senor. You may go. Captain Evans won't be bothering you for a few days. He's going to take Mrs. Merrill for a cruise. Won't that be nice? No. Go to your room. Now. We're about here headed due north. There's Sintra there. Have you ever seen the Palacio painter from Sintra? No, I haven't. Quite a sight. Then I command you to take me there, my good captain. On this ship, the captain gives the orders, not the mate. I am not the mate. Would you like to sign on? Do you run a happy ship? No, strictly shellback and salty. Well, I always did take my shellbacks with a grain of salt. I sign on. All right, stow that shot. Right there. Why is it that sailors always stow and people put? Are you implying that sailors are not people, Mr. Mate? That's debatable, sir. And that's insubordination. What's the penalty for that? A month in the brig on bread and water. What's the penalty for lying to the captain? Loss of rank, downgraded to ordinary seaman. Then you're looking at an ordinary seaman. Of course, I might promote you back to mate if you told the truth. The truth about what, for instance? The truth about Sylvia Merrill. People don't tell the truth to strangers. Not the real truth. Well, I'd uh, like to know the real truth. How does one get over being a stranger? Who, what, when, where? Are they the basic ingredients of all stories? Okay. Who? Robert John Evans, born in Boston on the right side of the tracks at an early age. Parents? Two, one mother, one father, both deceased. Now the what? Well, I went to college, graduated in engineering, got a job, and I settled down. Marriage? That's what I thought it was, until I checked a phone bill. Some long distance calls I thought had been charged by mistake. Well, there was no mistake. I paid. It's usually the woman who pays. Oh, sure, sure. I'm a little sick of that particular cliche, too. The woman always pays. Let me tell you something. It's the man who always pays, and we keep on paying. The man's heart's a little on the soft side, like putty. And Mark stay. What do you think a woman's heart is made of? Something much more durable and practical. Her emotions are usually governed by economics. It's quite a gadget, a woman's heart. You are bitter. Perhaps we'd better get on to the when part of your story. Well, when the war started, I went in the Navy, destroyers. When it was over, I decided to remain in Europe. So I went to England and I bought this conversion. For fishing. For fishing. And that brings us up to date on the what, when and where of Robert John Evans. She must have been very beautiful. Yeah, well, that's beside the point. Now, who is Sylvia? Any cigarette? Well, who is she? I was born in the west of Ireland. At an early age, as you say. And at an early age, I learned the values of poverty. We were saddled with a great gloomy old bat's nest with some historical associations. No money. None. So? So my father turned it into a museum. Tourists, trippers, chilling ahead. Bored? No, no. The part I want you to understand, Robert John, is the thing that made me do it. Do what? <laughs> Marry a man older than my own father. All right, why did you do it? Sometimes a car would drive away. A great, big, shiny one. My mind would follow it like a hungry dog all the way back to Dublin and the Grand Hotels. Oh, you'd never understand the bitterness of that kind of dream. Now I have $25 million. Or rather, my husband has. Life's an odd thing, truly. It's been done before. 
Oh, I liked him. And I believed that I could love him. I had to for my self-respect, you understand. Yeah, I understand. Oh, no, you don't understand. I was doing fine until you grabbed me and kissed me, broke my lip. Bled all night. I wouldn't stop bleeding. Because I wouldn't let it stop. <laughs> Take it easy. Just, just take it easy. Oh, how lovely. Lord Byron's supposed to have said that anyone who went through the world without seeing Sintra went through it with one eye closed. Maybe it was better so. May we go over there? Sure. To close your eyes and turn around, but don't open until I tell you. Close them. Now. Oh, it's wonderful. What is that castle? That's Palacio Pena. Those domes are rather strange. Well, it was partly built by the Moors. Portuguese borrowed a lot from them. Grapes look good. Quando é? Dois escudos por ser para si. Obrigado. Olha, Deus deu muitos meninos com muito assunto. Obrigado. Obrigado. Oh, no thanks. I'm allergic. Oh. What did she say? She said she hoped we'd have many strong children. Why are you looking at me like that? Was I? Sorry. Good? Sour. Grapes are sweet. Look, I think we'd better be getting back to the boat. You to go after your husband tonight. Yes, I know. What time do we get in? About eight. You could have had dinner with me. I couldn't eat. Neither could I. Please don't go. Look, what's the point? Oh, I know, I know. But there's so little time and so much to say. Please sit down. I want to ask you a question. What would you do if, if you had $25 million? Will you please sit down? Well, what? Buy a bigger, faster boat. You mean you'd go out smuggling? Sure. Don't you ever intend to give it up? Oh, I don't know. Maybe if the right woman came along, I might. You see, it's the game. It isn't the money. I guess I'm going to speak of Mavros in me. <laughs> Hasn't every man? Yeah, and every woman. A little good it does her. A woman can't go off running around the world doing as she pleases, having fun. Oh, no. We're the guardians of morals and manners. That's why you put us on your silly pedestal so we can't move a step without falling off. Uh-uh. We put you on pedestals so we can look up, not down. Yes, when really all we want is to walk with you, be with you, go with you. You talking about me? Yes, I am. 
You mean you'd divorce your husband, give up a fortune just to marry me? Oh, you... you don't understand. Oh, you don't, you don't. Look, there is something I don't understand. You want your husband back, don't you? I want him back more than anything else in the world. But I want him back dead. But he's old. He, he's old. Why can't he die now and let me live? Why? 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 Shut up! You don't know what you're saying. Mrs. Merrill's. Ah, madame. Did you have a pleasant trip? Very pleasant, thank you. To sit down? Well, tonight's the night. Captain Evans will depart in two hours, and he'll be back at midnight with your husband. Yes, I know. I have arranged that he be brought here where it is comfortable and private. Yes. And I assume that you have the balance of the fee? I have. With you? Yes. Uh, not now, dear lady. As they say in the States, COD, cash on delivery. Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Uh, some brandy? No, thank you. Something is troubling you? No. No, not really. You do me an injustice, dear lady. Tears leave a delightful brightness in the eyes. You have been weeping. I have. You have. Perhaps there's something I can do to make you happy. I wonder. You wonder what, Mrs. Merrill? You once said that all men must die sometime. I did indeed. But believe me, the idea did not originate with me. You said that death can sometimes be a fortunate thing. Am I correct in assuming that you want your husband back, but not alive? Yes, Mr. Mafferson. Oh, my dear lady. You have restored my faith in my judgment of human nature. Uh, but why dead? Why didn't you simply leave him where he was? Because I cannot touch any of his money without proof of his death. Positive proof. Or wait seven years. And I don't propose to wait seven years. <sighs> now I understand why your State Department would have been inadequate. Precisely. Murder can be an expensive commodity. How expensive? In view of the very large sum involved, I would say that uh, 4% would be fair, say a million dollars. I'll pay it as soon as the estate is settled. That will be satisfactory. concerning Captain Evans can jeopardize this entire project. I will not tolerate insubordination. You understand? I intend no insubordination, but I have a personal reason for eliminating Captain Evans. First things first. The freighter will be off Cabo de Roca at midnight, 30 miles west. They will have Merrill in a lifeboat. You will give them this packet of money. They will put Merrill aboard the Orca. Clear? Yes, senor. There is... One other thing, however. When Merrill arrives on shore, he must be dead. Oh? No marks. There should be no difficulty. He's quite old. Does Evans know about this plan? You can bring the boat back alone, can you not? Certainly. Then after you have Merrill aboard, by some happy circumstance, Captain Evans may fall overboard. Hmm? So he will, poor fellow. You better not go to the boat till it is time to leave. Yes, senor. I have an hour. Captain Evans, easier. Jack. Maggie, what are you doing here? You ought to go out tonight with Seraphim. Yes, I know. Seraphim's going to kill you. What makes you think so? Oh, please, to be serious, Jacques. Seraphim will. I know. But why? Oh, 
because you think I love you. Then why don't you tell him that... Wait a minute. Did you tell him you did? That's a lie. That's a question. Did you? We knew. He's not stupid, that Seraphim. Jack, please go away. Look, honey, don't worry about Seraphim. I'll be all right. But I do worry. I do love you, Jack. Oh, honey, only think you do. How can I protect you from Seraphim when all you do is laugh? Well, just tell him you don't love me. But you don't believe me. Nobody believe me. You fool, you. Ouch. What's that for? How dare you kiss me on the cheek like a child? I am a woman, grown. Yeah, you can say that again. Listen, I want to have my man escort you back to town. Why don't you escort me? I back? have to stand by. But Seraphim will be coming. Look, and... Don't worry about Seraphim, will you? Tommy! Yes, Captain? Take Miss Bassani back to town, will you? And look, don't worry anymore. Abby Seeler! West of Cabo da Roca. Okay, we'll shove off as soon as my man gets back. Mr. Mavros was very explicit on that point. No crew. Who's gonna help me handle this boat? I am. Do you know anything about boats? Enough. Okay, go on up and get the spring light in. We'll cast off. Got your message, Inspector. What's up? As you say in America, the jig is up for our Captain Evans. No. Ah, but yes, I have here a sworn affidavit from one Hassan Ben Ali, who states that he sold four gross of French perfume to the good captain, and further deposes that Evans assaulted and robbed him. Uh, unfortunately, the assault and robbery took place in North Africa. But that's not enough evidence ah, to. Ah, but there is a, there is there is more. I have here in jail the man to whom Evans sold the perfume. Fine, fine. But will he identify him? Save himself an extra year in jail, you can be sure he will. But I must see him, I must. He's dying. Senor Inspector, you must help me. He's going to kill Captain Evans. Who is going to kill Captain Evans? Seraphim. He went with him on the boat. Where? Oh, I don't know. But Mavros knows. Let us go. I am desolated, gentlemen, that I can give you no specific information. Where and when Captain Evans will return, I do not know. But you know where he went? Oh, no. Only that he will return with Mr. Lloyd Merrill tonight, an achievement which your State Department was unable to accomplish. An achievement that could set off international complications. Oh, no, my friend. This is an act of mercy. Mr. Merrill is old and feeble. You would leave him to die in prison, while I will not. If this is a crime, I will submit to arrest. You have not committed any crime, Signor Maris, that we are aware of. However, tomorrow morning we will pick up your passport. You are no longer welcome in Portugal. What a pity. It's a lovely country. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Mr. Norworth. Good night. Maria. Adieu. Starward in the lifeboat. I see them. Here.
Подожди момент. Деньги, мани, мани. Все здесь. Все здесь. Есть. Давай сюда, буржуй. Ну, пойдем, ну. Ну, иди, ну, в чем дело? Иди, поднимайся. Бери. Some brandy, Mr. Merrill? Yeah, thank you. This will make you feel better. Thank you. How's my wife? Very well, sir. Still as beautiful as ever? She's very beautiful, sir. Seraphim! Better get that boarding ladder in four cars away. You always run at 1800? Normal cruising, yeah. The automatic pilot, it works? Uh-huh. How to make it take over? I don't at night. Too many fishing boats. If you want to engage it, just turn that switch. This one? That's right. Is it our true course to be laying? Well, it's corrected course, five degrees of drift. I see. I think I'd better go and see how our passenger is making out. He was complaining of a severe pain in his heart when I left him. Well, get down there. What are you looking for, Mr. Merrill? You're looking for a weapon, Mr. Merrill? Keep away from me. Keep away from me. You didn't drink your brandy, Mr. Marrow. No. I saw you put something in it. Think I'm a fool? <laughs> yes, Mr. Marrow. Be almost two o'clock. Mm. 
Mrs. Merrill, people, clever people, will be observing your reactions. You must exercise more control. There is, dear lady, in every human journey, a point of no return. This is yours. Mrs. Merrill, I'm afraid I have a disappointment for you. My dear. My darling. Oh, my darling. Well, Mrs. Merrill, you got what you wanted. Mr. Mavris, you owe me some money. So I do. So I do. Thank you. Oh, by the way, my man Seraphim, have you seen him? Oh, oh, yes, he fell overboard. Careless. Oh, very. Well, good luck, Mr. Merrill. I'm going to take a strong personal interest in your future. Now that I've had some small part in making one possible. <laughs> and I'm sure that your wife will see to it that nothing will ever happen to endanger that future. Well, thank you, Captain Evans. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mrs. Merrill. Goodbye, Captain Evans. Just a moment, Captain. Anthony. Do you see the man that sold you the perfume in this room? See. Si. Point him out. Congratulations, Captain. You have very loyal colleagues. I will trouble you for your passport, Senor Mavris. I anticipated your request. Where are you going? I guess my beachcombing days are over. So from now on, I'm traveling the straight and narrow. But without you, I'm afraid things might be kind of dull. Will you go with me? Anywhere. Let's go. 